Hey everyone, it's Clifton from the DYD Explanation here. I wanted to walk you guys through some of the highlights that we saw um, for Epoch 13. So let's first start with trading metrics. Um, fortunately, we've had rates across the board. Um, for trading volume, average daily volume, ending open interest, as well as fees paid, I do want to point out that for fees paid, this might be attributable um, to DYDX trading announcing free trades for all users that trade below $100,000 in a given month. So if we look at trading rewards metrics, we had 5,500 unique wallets earned 5.8 million DYDX through all these different rewards mechanisms. And this is a significant decrease from Epoch 12, where we have 8,600 unique wallets earned um, rewards. And again, this is also attributable to the free trading announcement. Free trading essentially means that many smaller retail traders have their fee component at zero. And if you're familiar with the trading rewards formula, um, there's it, it's all like multiplication. So if you don't pay any fees, you effectively don't get any rewards. Um, so all in all, we saw 43,000 unique wallets in Epoch 13, which have previously earned all DYDX rewards through all these different rewards mechanisms. For LP rewards, we have 58 addresses eligible for LP rewards in Epoch 13, and the competition in the pool increased slightly from the previous Epoch, where only 50 addresses were eligible. So 53 addresses did more than 0.25% of maker volume in Epoch 13, and will be eligible for LP rewards in Epoch 14. If we look at the liquidity module, we have 111 million USDC staked across 636 users, and this is an 11.2% increase from the 100 million USDC staked in Epoch 12. That said, if we go to compare active staking balance, um, we only saw 68 million USDC being actively staked and earning rewards, um, whereas the active balance for Epoch 12 was at 77 million, and there has been a huge number of requests for withdrawals from the pool, um, because many of them are actually anticipating the winding down the boring pool going live, uh, which effectively sets the rewards rate for staking USDC to zero. If we look at the breakdown of all um, USDC stakers um, in the liquidity pool, the top three stakers account for 31% um, of all the USDC being staked. Still on the liquidity pool, we have borrowing pool. So we have three market makers cumulatively borrow 22.1 million USDC. Um, two market makers borrow a combined 110,000, while one market maker has borrowed the majority of the 22 million um, out of the 22.1 million. And this dynamics is actually unchanged from Epoch 12. That said, there is actually an ongoing proposal right now to move the borrowing pool over to TrueFi, and this brings about high capital utilization and improved liquidity for lenders, better rewards distribution to productive market makers, as well as TrueFi being able to actually administer all the credit due diligence for all the borrowers who are looking to borrow from the pool. If we look at the safety module, we've had 38.7 million DYDX from um, 3,200 users being staked to the safety module, and this is an increase um, from 35.4 million in Epoch 12. However, if we want to look at just the active staked balance again, um, that number has remained unchanged at 33 million dollars between uh, at 33 million DYDX, sorry, between Epoch 13 and Epoch 12, and we have actually seen 281 addresses request to withdraw staked DYDX. So this is actually something which is uh, relatively new. Usually, over each Epoch, we do see the active balance increasing, um, and again, this can be attributable to the snapshot on simplifying training rewards, which removes the stake DYDX um, component from the training rewards formula. And if we look at the um, breakdown by stakers, uh, we can see that the top two stakers actually account for 33% of all the stake DYDX in the safety module. Over to the DYDX token supply metrics, we have 13.3% of all DYDX um, being considered liquid at the end of Epoch 13. So this um, excludes the unearned retroactive rewards transferred to the treasury as well as the DYDX vested in the community treasury. Now, if you hold DYDX or stake DYDX, but you have no time to do anything governance related, you can consider delegating your proposing or and voting power to one of our 22 endorsed delegates. Now on to governance. So we've had one on-chain dip pass um, this epoch, and that is the launch of the DYDX Grants project program version 1.5. So again, just a quick recap, the on-chain dip to launch the DGP version 1.5 for six months with 5.5 million DYDX actually passed with unanimous consent from the DYDX community, uh, where we saw 28.5 DYDX being voted um, to support this launch across 219 addresses. So that actually translates to roughly 2.6 million DYDX being transferred from the community treasury to the Grants Trust multi-sig, um, which is managed by the trustees of the Grants Trust. In addition to this transfer of the DYDX tokens, um, two trustees on the Grants Trust were also replaced. So if you actually go to dydxgrants.com, um, they actually are opening applications for grants again. For off-chain DIPs, we've had um, to revert the trading rewards formula. So just for context, um, this initially passed snapshot votes and was simplified mid-epoch to W equals F. So you can see that this was the old formula and we simplified it mid-epoch um, to W equals F. Um, we actually got a lot of negative feedback from the community just because like the change was uh, right in the midst of the epoch and we didn't give sufficient notice so we actually reverted it back to the old formula for the entirety of epoch 13 and in epoch 13 trading rewards will still be distributed as per this old formula but in epoch 14 uh, which has already started um, this new trading formula where w equals to f is already in place on to snapshot polls, we only have one for this epoch, and that is to revise the LP rewards formula. So on August 11th, Selenium Capital posted a snapshot poll um, to revise the formula in these ways. So we want to change the weights for non-BTC and ETH markets, as well as for BTC and ETH markets. And we also are looking to reduce rewards paid out to BTC and ETH markets um, by 10% each and moving them over to the tail end market. So ultimately, this is just to make sure that we have it to be more equitable. Um, and we want to make sure that BTC and ETH markets, which are more mature, are actually more volume driven. 
So this snapshot poll actually ended on August 15 uh, with nearly unanimous support from the community where we saw 23 million DYDX vote yes to revise the formula. So the next steps for a couple of the past snapshot um, polls. So we have two proposals that needs um, on-chain DIPs. So, and that is the reduction of trading rewards by 25%, as well as the winding down the borrowing poll. Now these need on-chain DIPs because it involves transferring of DYDX tokens from the rewards treasury, as well as from the liquidity staking pool uh, back to the community treasury. And for the LP rewards formula revision that I just went through, um, this doesn't require an on-chain vote. Um, and for all three proposals, we actually have gotten interest from the community um, that they will actually be creating these DIPs for this epoch. Let's move on to a couple of forum discussions. So on the DRC side, briefly talked about the moving of the borrowing pool over to TrueFi. So again, TrueFi is proposing to launch automated lines of credit for each borrower. And again, it brings about high capital utilization and improved liquidity, better rewards distribution, as well as TrueFi being able to administer the credit diligence that um, for the borrowers that DYDX historically has not been um, able to do so um, well enough. We also have a DRC posted by the foundation um, to discuss whether we want to continue the ambassador program for season two, which runs from September 1st to November 31st. So 13 ambassadors across five boroughs has actually um, expressed their interest in continuing as ambassadors into season two. And based on any community feedback, we will actually be creating a snapshot poll uh, to formally get a, a consensus on whether this program should be continued or not. There was also a DRC to add Bylira or TRYB onto DYDX. So Bylira posted this um, DRC to onboard Bylira, which allows Turkish users to trade on DYDX with only a domestic bank transfer. So Turkey is actually one of the biggest um, countries when it comes to crypto activity in the Middle East. And once um, the proposal actually states that upon onboarding Bylira, we are actually opening DYDX to approximately 85 million people um, in Turkey. And you know the adoption of cryptocurrencies in Turkey is ever expanding. So other active forum discussions include, um, sorry about that, um, Alucard posting a thread prompting discussion on reveries management of the funds for um, the DGP version 1.5. So several DYDX community members have actually complained that reveries should have diversified the funds sooner. And you can see more in the thread here. Um, we created a blog um, for the third episode of the Meet Delegate series, which featured Vitaly, um, an endorsed delegate who has been actively engaging Russian-speaking communities and onboarding them onto DYDX. So we have a three thread as well as a blog post here. Um, and lastly, the analytics borrow built out um, DYDXstats.com, which is a native analytics dashboard which unifies um, DYDX data into a powerful and user-friendly website. So let's move on to um, Grant's version 1.5 update. So as I mentioned earlier, the DIP to launch version 1.5 actually passed in Epoch 13, um, and they've since reopened applications for grants. So in the first round since relaunch, the DGP has approved six grants for a total of 331,500 funding. These are the six grants which got approved, and you can click on each um, link here to learn more about each grant. On the hedges side of things, the DYDX Foundation announced that 22 out of the foundation's 205 hedges um, have actually found new homes with community members, and you can read more about the distribution announcement here. Lastly, on the administrative side of things, Epoch 14 um, started on August 30th at 3 p.m. UTC and ends on September 27th at 3 p.m. UTC. Epoch 13 rewards will be claimable here um, on the DYDX community dashboard on September 6th at 9.24 UTC, which is a seven-day and six-hour delay after the Epoch ends. Um, and once tokens have been claimed, they can be transferred, staked to the safety module, or delegated to DYDX governance. That's it for Epoch 11. Thank you.